Hi everyone, this is Tina with Rehatch Designs. Hope everybody's doing well today. I am here uh, going to start a video on um, kind of a beginner junk journal, I think. Um, it will have sewing and a signature, but it's, it's pretty basic and I think pretty easy to do. And the reason I'm doing this is for twofold. Um, one, my niece is having a baby shower at the end of March and she asked me to make her a journal uh, for a uh, kind of a sign in for the uh, shower and then also to put some little mementos and things like that in. And also because um, there's just a lot of people out there that I'm getting um, messages from personally and um, I've also noticed even on some Facebook groups, a lot of new people who are just, they're just afraid to start. They don't know where to start. They don't know what to do. So I'm going to try and make this as easy as possible. Um, but it is going to be involved sewing in a journal, sewing in a signature, um, and making a cover. And the reason, um, I want to do it this way is that I think that, um, I've done several ring bound journals and uh, no sew journals and things like that. And if you're new to my channel, um, just look through my playlist and there's several in there. And I'll try and um, I think I really need to go through my playlist and kind of, you know, put the easy beginner journal stuff kind of in all one category. But for now, what I'll do is I'll put those in the description box so you can click on those if you want other types of journals like a hardback journal or um, a ring bound or a no sew. Those are in there also. But this is going to be just a very basic um, one signature journal. It is going to involve sewing it in. It's going to involve... Um, picking papers and and getting them ready and it will in, involve we're going to use um, some cloth and some packaging so it'll give you a good uh, starting set of skills I think to take to the next level okay so anyway this is what we're going to go ahead and do um, this is kind of predetermined because my niece wanted sunflowers and I went through and looked at lots of different um, digitals out there, and there's a lot. And again, you don't have to use a digital. You can use scrapbook paper that you have. You can um, use just whatever papers you find. Um, this is what I'm doing. And I, and I think at digitals for people that are just starting out, it's great because it gives them a place to start. And they can add their own twist to it and whatever. And I had nothing with sunflowers, really. So I kind of had to go and look for some things. This is uh, Sunny Mornings by Calico Collage. And like I always do, I'm going to show you all of the uh, pages. I do want to show you uh, one thing before I start. I use um, this Southworth, Southworth parchment paper in the ivory. And the reason I do that is um i do think that the uh it prints better rather than the co copying paper even even the better quality copying paper that i've tried doesn't do as well as this and the other reason i use it is because it's very sturdy paper it's not thick paper it's sturdy and in that um the weave on it and the type of paper it is it takes a lot of abuse and I do a lot of mixed media and all kinds of things and at, to my papers. So I like it to be able to hold up to that. Um, so, and it's relatively inexpensive. Um, I buy it off of Amazon and I will try and remember to put the link on there. If I forget to put links and stuff, you guys remind me because I do forget all the time. Sometimes it takes me forever to upload my video and then I'm just so excited it uploaded. I forget all the other stuff. Okay, so anyway, here's the first. This is um, some pockets and a library card and a little library pocket. 
Now, this is not printed on the parchment paper. This is cardstock that I buy in the ivory. I don't, I rarely print on white. It just, I don't, I very rarely do that. So whenever you're seeing these things, guys, they would be even brighter if they were on white. So, but I will tell you that um, if you print um, um, basically uh, on your printer presentation, um, it will print a lot crisper and better usually. Um, of course, it depends on your printer, but it does put down a little bit more ink, I think. Um, but, you know, you're paying for the quality of the, you know, of the, of the uh, print when you buy these digitals. So you might as well get the best copy that you can. Here's some more. And this kit is really, really, I mean, really pretty. And it has a lot to it. So that's why I think this would be really good for a beginner because it has so many elements to it. And, you know, it helps you get started. And then you add your own things in with it. Okay. And there's lots of pages. Now, I didn't print on both sides. And that's what you would do is you would take a page. Like these, to me, are ones that you would be put on the back of a page. But I haven't done that yet just because I haven't decided what I'm going to put where and what pages I'm going to use. Um, but they won't go to waste. I always do usually two journals that are the same, so, or similar anyway. Aren't these pages beautiful? They're just gorgeous. And I know that it's a little ahead because sunflowers are more summer and fall. And But she wanted sunflowers, so I'm doing sunflowers. And, you know, she's, the theme of her shower is all, um, is all, sunflowers so you can see they are beautiful beautiful pages so anyway that's what I'm going to be using and if you notice in here there's a lot of blue and that is what kind of um, made me think how I wanted to do this cover. Okay, first off, I wanted to make it easy. So what I picked for my cover is I have some old, some denim. Part of, this is part of blue jeans. Just so happens this has like this cut work on it. You could use a pocket. You could use whatever it is that you have. And then I'm going to be using some packaging from Amazon. I don't know where that plastic piece came from. But um, this is the, I think, 12 by 9. Yeah, this is 12 inches by, it's a little over 9. It's like about 9, a little over 9 and a quarter. I would say, let's just call it nine and a quarter. So 12 by nine and a quarter. And so that makes the perfect size if you're trying to um, make a one signature journal because it will give you a one inch spine if you have your pages at five and a half and then, um, you know, then your spine at one inch. So, because you'll have, you know, basically six inches on each side and, you know, you're using five and a half inches. So a half inch there and then a half inch on the other side. So you'll see. We'll, we'll mark it up and get it going. So I'm going to use that. But I'm also going to use this denim. And um, I'm going to show you how to use both of these things. If you do not have um, this packaging, you can use the uh, kind of uh, yellow or gold colored packaging that you get and then just cover it with a paper bag or brown brown um the brown packaging that comes inside because it'll give you the same effect but if you have this um that just kind of gets you started where you, you kind of skip that step so anyway um what i want to do is kind of just if we could um just 
start with the bag and get that going. Um, I am going to cut this to uh, probably eight and three quarters because I don't need it to be um, nine and a quarter or nine and a half inches tall. So I'm going to do eight and three quarters and all right, cut another one. Let me do that. So let's get my cutter out and I'm going to go eight and three quarters. And I'm going to cut that right there. And this will cut it. You just have to go through it a couple times and it'll cut it nice and straight. Oh, I said that and then it didn't do it. I'll have to cut that. Didn't go through the second one I should have done it maybe one more time let's do it again there we go I think that worked okay so anyway so now I made that eight and three quarters and we already know it's 12 inches um, as far as the width this goes now I could just do it on here I'm covering one side of this with um, material and so you wouldn't see any of this but the other side is going to be on the inside and I want it to um, have like a uh, leather look to it so I am going to take my bone folder and I am going to do my best to open this without ripping it which can be done because I have done it just take it and go like that and it usually opens pretty well and not don't open the end okay so we're just opening that one side and then we're going to do it to the other side all right so now this is what we have and that's the reason we opened it, is that we didn't want to have all of the writing that's on here, okay? So then what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of flip this the other direction. And we want to line up the tops because we know that we have it the right, the right height. And line up the sides. Basically square it off. Okay, and then why don't we get it squared off, we're going to go to take our bone folder and make sure we just make a nice crease in there so we have it just the way we want it. And honestly guys, this whole adding the denim part is really extra. Um, you can make a really great um, uh uh, cover just with this. I mean, you don't have to do the whole nother denim part. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is I want it to kind of have a leather look. Um, and this is going to be the inside of the journal, but I, you know, I like my inside to look good. So what I'm going to do first off is I am going to glue the top of this together. I'm not doing the sides because I am going to actually leave a pocket here and a pocket here okay so I'm gonna put some glue all along the top and I'm doing just the top and I'm using my three-in-one because it's strong and it and it uh, grabs fast and I need it to dry because um, we'll be doing our next step quickly so anyway so I'm gonna do that and I'm going to try and square this up as perfectly as I can. And do this side. Okay, and go all the way down. Make sure it's on there straight. Now I'm going to use my clips to let that dry because so it doesn't slip and get kind of off kiltered. All right. And I am going to be sewing all of this later, so... Um, it doesn't have to be perfect as far as um, staying glued, but I do want it to be square, okay? 
so anyway that is that and it is drying so we're gonna let that sit there for just a second or two and then it'll dry okay now this is going to be my inside or maybe i'll make that my inside i think i'll make this side my inside okay so what i'm going to do with that is i want to make this look like leather and so i'm going to be using um just some vintage photo and some walnut stain okay and i'm going to be using my inkers i do have um this is for that and where did my other one go here it is this is for my walnut stain and i'm also going to be using um, these so we'll be doing that right and that should be dry enough okay so now what i'm going to do is i am going to take my vintage photo first and i'm going to take it and pretty much go all along here a little bit oh wait forgot what you want to do also is you want to crumple this up okay okay and i do this after i glue it just because it's kind of hard to glue it straight after but um you know you can do it before if you want to and you the reason you crumple it up is that it will give like little peaks and valleys where the ink will stick and what that does is it will make it look more like leather okay move that down i was making sure i did it on the right side although it wouldn't matter if you did it on both sides so basically you're just taking this and you're going to put it all over and there's no rhyme or reason really i just kind of do that with this first and then I take my inker after because it actually adds more ink to it and it's like it hits the um, crevices a little bit more but I like that other color on there first okay And you could totally not do this step. You could totally not do the leather thing. Um, that's totally, that's up to you. Just like a lot of things we do, it's up to your taste and what you like. And, you know, you got to kind of make those decisions on your own. And a lot of times you don't know until you try. So you just kind of have to give it a little try now what I do is I take my walnut stain and I'll basically do the same thing and I like adding the two colors just because and I do put the walnut stain more on the edges and stuff because you have to think if you had something an old leather piece or whatever now you will have the glue um, that was there that's sticking on the edges but that's okay because there's going to be some trim on there later so it's not going to really show and I just take that and having the two colors in there I think looks really it just I don't know it adds some depth to it And of course you take your time i'm going kind of fast because i'm trying to do this real time i did have someone complain that it, this took me too long to get to the meat and potatoes of my video and i'm like well i don't know you can fast forward um, you know i don't know what to tell you all right so anyway Just do that and 
it will have a really cool effect when you're done. Of course, go over the cracks like I did in the other one. And you make it as dark as you want. I mean, you just make that decision on your own. I mean, I personally, I really love the effect. It's really fun. Okay, so that's about all the inking I'm going to do on this. So, what I do after that is I always seal it. And um, only because, not because it has to be sealed, but I think it adds to the leather effect. And I'm going to use matte gel because I don't like it to be too shiny. Um, you can use a matte Mod Podge. Um, so I will just take that with my brush and just generously go over it. And I only do one coat. I don't do more than one, but... This is really fun. What The way it looks when it's done is fun. And that's why I'm saying you could do this on both sides because we've turned it inside out and there's no writing or anything. And um, that then that makes a great uh, journal cover. So the reason I'm doing this um, kind of in a soft cover is honestly, if you are new to making a journal, they are more forgiving. They lie flat. Um, you can even overstuff them a little and get away with it, whereas you can't so much as a hardcover. Um, it's a little bit easier to me. And so that's why I'm kind of doing this. So um, I have a video out there on how to do a Reader's Digest, which I think is very basic. I have one that's a no so. Um, so I figured this one's a little bit different, although I have done these before with you guys, so, but I, I don't know if I did it start to finish, so. Okay, so that's all you're going to do for that. I'm going to go ahead and dry this, and I'll be right back, and then we will go ahead and go on to the next step, okay? So, um, which is really pretty easy too, so. I have go ahead and dried this. I decided to go ahead and put a little bit of Mod Podge matte on there um, because actually the matte medium that I used, it was it had no shine to it at all, and I wanted it to have a little bit more of a shine. Um, that's your personal preference. Um, and I used my heat gun, and it bubbled up a little here, but I'm good with that because to me it makes it look more distressed. And what I do after that dry is I take my um, vintage photo and I kind of go over it again um, and just add a little bit more on there. And you can take it in any of the parts that are distressed and do that. And that will give it a very leathery look to it. Okay, so that's the inside, right? So I'm going to put this the other way because this is our outside and of course you could do it to both sides but you're not going to see most of it so um, it just depends on what you're doing if you're going to have it just the leather look on both sides and do it to both sides but I'm just doing that okay so now what I want to do is I am going to take my denim and this is just a, a leg of a, uh, a denim uh, pant leg and it just so happens it has this stuff on it um, you can use stuff think about it with a pocket or gosh whatever you have um, you can use any kind of material again it doesn't have to be denim what I like to do whenever I'm doing these is I actually like to glue my fabric on here and then trim it because it just seems to work better for me that way usually when I trim it and try and fit it that's always off a little bit. So this way I put it on and I trim it. So um, this is obviously way too big. I'm going to go ahead and try and cut this down a little bit so I'm not working with such a big piece. Um, you would be surprised at a one pair of jeans or whatever. If you cut them up, you can find all kinds of stuff. All right, so I am going to go ahead and I am going to use my three-in-one glue. 
And the way that I usually do this is I put the glue on the on this part that's already cut to size. Now remember we have our pockets. Um, I don't know if it really matters. I think I'm going to do Okay, I think I'm going to do this is the bottom. I don't know. Does it really matter? It doesn't really matter. So, and I will be sewing this also. Um, so I'm not, you know, too concerned about getting it on the edges too much. But I won't be sewing on the sides because we're going to leave those pockets open. And I won't be sewing in the middle. So I have to kind of, you know, basically I'm sewing only on top. So I'm going to make sure I have enough glue that will hold it down. And I will spread it all out in just a second. I just put some on there and then get it all kind of globbed on there good. I don't know what happened. I'm on a, like a... A reoccurring thing on my three and one and um, the last two times they had said that they didn't have it so I don't know if there's a shortage of the three and one again I know there was for a while and the fabric tack and then it kind of comes and goes so I don't know or maybe it's a shipping thing or whatever so if you guys know let me know but anyway, I always try and make sure I get enough on there so there's no spots that are going to be coming up later. Because that's always discouraging. And I take my little spreader thing wherever it has gone. I don't know. Here we go. And this is my little makeup spreader that I got. Or mask spreader, actually, and not makeup. Um, that I got at um, the dollar store. I've looked the last few times and they haven't had them. I don't know if they discontinue them or they just sell quickly, but I really should, next time I see them, get all I can find because, um, you know, they're not there all the time. So, Okay. Now, while this does dry quickly, it does give you a little bit of time for placement. So um, if you want more time, um, I would use like tacky glue um, just because or a thick, you know, PVA like this. Um, and I usually do use that except when I'm doing stuff with, um, you know, when I'm recording just because um, this works faster. And, you know, I'm trying to do stuff to where it dries within the time and allotted time that we have that I'm doing the video. So... And I usually, when I use the tacky glue, what I do on that, this is a tapered leg, so I'm trying to get it, you know, to where it fits on there. Oh, shoot. i got to move it back a tiny bit. I was trying to line up that side pretty good. And fabric stretches, so you're going to have, you know, a little give. Okay, that's good. I think that's good. doesn't go directly to the edge that's okay too and I had already cut this piece a little bit but not you know exactly and I do that just because I know now see you're going to have that showing through let me get a wipe in a minute and get that extra glue off because you don't want the glue I don't mind if the brown shows through but I would like it not to be so shiny so I'm going to pull that up as much as possible okay and if not we can go in there with some ink and get rid of a lot of that okay so that takes up most of it all right so there we go with that okay now I've got it all on there good and I'm going to make sure it's on pretty good. I think this part right here is buckled a little on the edge, so I'm going to kind of smooth that out. Okay. It's mainly because of the applique part of it. Okay, put some glue right there, because I think that's where I lifted it up, and it, it took, took some of the glue. 
And then the denim is, you know, it's heavier, so you probably want to make sure you have enough glue on there. Now, if you weren't making a pocket, you could sew all the way around, and I may do that still. I haven't really 100% decided, so we shall see, right? I'm going to make sure I have plenty of glue on there without doing my pocket shut. Okay, so I'm going to put that on there and let it dry a little bit before I manhandle it and cut it. Okay, that's okay. That's just kind of a thread. All right. And I'll just take this and kind of go on the edges a little bit, and then that way... It'll stick down. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I am just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut all the way around my fabric. Okay, and then that way I know it will fit correctly because when I try and cut it and put it down, it never seems to work. This way, I know it's perfect. Or, you know, close enough to perfect. So I'll do that. Alright. Well, that looks pretty good. This side. You could totally skip this whole denim, putting the denim or material on part and, and just make the um, cover and you would be doing just fine. Um, I would, if you're going to do that, put some tie back in the middle um, just to give it some extra support. I did not like in the inside right here and I may still do that. Um, put some Tyvek right here, right down here. Um, you know, when you're flipping it inside out, that's when you would put it in. But since I didn't do it then, I could always add it in here because this is open. Um, just because it gives it extra, you know, extra stability. But because I've used material on the outside, um, it'll probably be plenty strong with just that. But if you're just using your... Um, your packaging I would definitely use Tyvek or a piece of material or you know what works really well is duct tape um, just so that um, when you tie when you sew your signatures in they're nice and um, secure okay that is just a little trim right there okay so that is going to be our cover, and then I will sew up here and around here. Um, I'll be putting some other things on there. Um, I don't know, you know, uh, exactly what. So um, let's just, let's see, that needs a little bit more glue there. You just kind of have to go and look and see and put enough glue to where it's staying down good. That will be the base of my cover. And the one thing I was going to show you, and let me get my scoreboard out so I can kind of show you, is the way that this is going to work on your cover is you've got 12 inches here. So you're going to go at, let's see if I can find something to use that work I'll just use my bone folder so we're going to go basically at five and a half inches right here kind of doing this a little late in the game five and a half inches this goes right here so that's five and a half inches okay now this is a soft cover so you don't really need to do this I'm just doing it to show you where your um, where your your uh, papers are basically going to sit inside here, and I kind of always do this just so I can see what I'm working with. 
but it's totally not necessary because it's a soft cover. Okay, so five and a half inches, and I just go straight down here. And all that does is it gives you an idea when you are um, putting in your signatures what you're dealing with. And I always do that just for my own benefit. I don't mark it or anything. I just kind of have the fold line there. And that is only for my, my being able to kind of gauge where I'm at. Okay. It serves no other purpose because on a soft cover, there's not like a really a, um, a set spine, but you do want to leave room for a spine. Okay, so basically that's your spine right there. Okay, from here to here. And basically that shows you where it is when you're, when you're doing stuff by just looking at that little line. And I think that's helpful for new people. Um, it was helpful for me. It's still helpful for me. But because when I go to sew in my signatures, I know that um, I'm going to put them in. Usually I put them in um, right in the middle of the two. So you've got a half inch. So it'd be a quarter of an inch in. And that's usually what I do. And I know where that is. And I it helps me keep things even when I go to put them in. So anyway, what I will do is I'm going to sew around this part and this part. And um, when I'm done with that, I will come back and show you. Okay, so I went ahead and I sewed along the top on both sides. And I meant to show you this, but I'll show you now. Um, this is the tie that I'm going to use, and this is just a piece of uh, cotton lace trim I thought would go really well with this. And the way that I attached that is I went ahead and um, I put a little bit of glue here, and then I glued it here and glued it here, and I sewed right down um, the middle, and that, that keeps it in there securely. And then I went ahead and just sewed at the very end on this side and on that side for added stability, okay? So if you were sewing this and not having a pocket, then what you would do is you would just, you could just sew all the way down. But I just went ahead and um, sewed just that little portion right there, okay? So it won't pull, won't pull what's on top of this, okay? Um, now, the other thing, um, I'm not going to do all the decorating because some of it has to happen after we've sewn in our signatures, but I am going to show you what I'm going to do and part of the elements that are going to be on it. Um, I am going to add several things to the cover, and I like to um, have my elements sometimes um, sealed, and I use uh, wax with that. This is some dictionary page, and it has this cute little B right there. I thought about using that, but it's going to end up covering most of it, so probably not going to use that. I have some music paper that I've already sealed with wax, and I think I'm going to use this Choose to Shine. So I looked through all of the different elements that came with it, and I think I like that. It kind of has... Um, you know, already has some words on it. So I'm going to take that, but I want to seal it. And I'm going to do it the same way that I sealed the other elements. Is I'm just going to take my little iron. And I have a few wax beads that I'm going to put on there. And I'm just going to melt them. And it happens pretty quickly. So this is a really easy thing to do. Um, of course, you could put decoupage or mod podge or whatever on there to seal it. But this does a really good job, and it dries instantly. So, not instantly, but within it, within them, it's already dry. Okay, and it's not shiny or sticky or anything like that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and use this for the cover um, with the other elements. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And this is just a little travel iron that I bought. Um, 
I was going to get a craft iron, but then I remembered I had that. So I thought, okay, I'll just use that. Anyway, so if you ever want to seal something, you see how quickly that worked. So I'm going to use that with some music paper. Um, I think I'll take this wider piece right here. And I probably am just going to tear it. Um, do I want to use that side or this side? Well, I could do this side. I'll just do this a little bit. Okay. And I don't care that it's perfect. In fact, I like it better that it's not. Um, I'm also thinking about using a piece of this vintage um, lace that are, uh, it's kind of a fabric type lace. It's very, very vintage. Um, I just don't know if it's going to be wide enough to even see it. I think one side's a little bit wider. So what if I cut it? I don't care if it's straight. In fact, I prefer it not be. I want it kind of, let me see if I can rip it. Sometimes it rips well, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, see, I want it frayed like that. So hope I just don't want it too much so that it, it's not even a square. And then I have to kind of do it to the other side now because I just did that. Okay. This stuff, because it's so old, it rips really easily. So, so I think I might put that on there with it. And then I like lots of layers. So, and I always like texture if I can get it on there. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I may fray the other edges a little bit too. Um, let me try using these because they're a little bit more. So I'm just going to fray this a little bit more so it kind of matches a little bit. And this is all I have left of this and I love it because it, it does rip so good. And that's what's great about vintage laces and things. They, they tear really easily and it's got kind of a off white color already and okay so I think I'm going to do that and the way that I'm going to do my cover is I believe like this and I know it has all this on there but I intended to cover it okay that's going to probably go toward the middle but over here I'm kind of you know I'm not a hundred percent what I'm going to do um, I was thinking one of two things, okay? I'm thinking I have this vintage stuff here, and I may just put it, like, right here, um, just to kind of, you know, give it a little bit of, um, you know, texture and whatever, and then I like to use that to, um, cover my signatures when they go in, and of course, you don't have to do that. I do have some other um, lace like this that I could put on there. And I have a bigger piece somewhere. I'll have to look for it. And I was thinking I could put that on there. Um, and I may do that. I don't know. But I'm not going to put that piece on until um, I get my signatures sewn in. Because that covers the signatures. I also thought about putting a doily on there. But then the doily kind of covered almost all the other stuff. And I didn't want to do that. So I think it's a toss up between that. And I'll have to find my other piece of lace that I can put here. Because then it doesn't cover all of this. Um, I know it covers the opening there. But that's kind of okay. Because I really wasn't going to keep it. So I think I might do this and fray it up a little bit, you know, and then put that like right there. Now I am going to add some little sunflowers, okay, that I, that I'm making and I think I'm just going to put two on there and I want to show you how I did that really quick just so that you can see, um, exactly, um, 
how to do this if you want to do it yourself, something like that. I have these little flowers that come, that I bought these at Hobby Lobby when they go on sale for $1.24. Um, and anyway, if you can get these white ones, they're the best to get because you can make them any color you want. Um, and they have all different styles and, you know, of cut flowers. I also have some orange ones over here that I could easily use um, for these. I actually thought this looked more like a sunflower. The um, petals on this, these are the white ones than these other ones did. Um, so I decided to try these. And I'm just going to show you what I did just to give you guys an idea of what you can do. Okay. Let me get one more out just so that I, in case I decide, I might want to do three. I like to do things in three. So, you know, it's like, I don't know. I just, I like to have three. So this would make two more. And let me show you what I did. Okay, so let me get a paper towel out and put this aside. So I... I could have just used the one I stuck in the trash from the other stuff, but that's okay. Anyway, I'm going to just take these and put them on here. And there is a right side because they have the little indentations in there. And what I did is I took my um, Distress Oxide Wild Honey, shake it up, all right, and... You could use, um, if you have a Distress Oxide that is just, let's see, I think I have one that was that similar color. If you have just something that's like this, you can just ink it on there. You don't have to have the spray, but I have the spray in this color, and it actually is a good color. Uh-oh, is that one broken? Yeah, I don't know if this one's broken. Okay, so I'm just going to spray these, and they kind of make a little bit of a mess, so I'm trying to, and it doesn't take much, just a little bit. And these are made to really absorb color. You could use watercolors or anything you have. I think this one needs, no, I don't know if it needs any more. Okay, and this one probably needs one more little squirt right up there. And basically, they dry extremely quick, okay? So you can see already, they look a lot more like a sunflower, don't they? Okay? Now I'm going to turn that over so you can see better. Then I'm going to show you the next step that I did. All right? So I took... This is um, spiced marmalade, and it's basically kind of an orangey yellow color. And this is distress oxide. Again, you could have just taken whatever color you have and gone over it. You don't have to have the spray. I just happen to have it. Or you can use watercolors. This is just a very concentrated color, so it's it 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 looks really good um, when you do that. So. And I am going to take, and remember, this is water activated. Oh, gosh, my brush just fell apart. Let me get another one. That's weird. Okay. I have all my brushes sitting over here, so I'm just trying to find a small one. Okay, here we go. So I am going to take just a small brush, and I am going to wet it a little bit. And I'm going to take it and actually just pick up some color from here. Okay. And I'm going to just paint this little. Yeah, this one's not as good as my other brush was. It just fell on the ground. But anyway, that's the idea. Because I'm just adding some color in here just to give it a little bit extra color. So it's not all the same. And this is kind of a, 
lighter orange and I'm not picking up that much color so and you got to remember too when you wet this what you're doing you may want to do it a little drier when you wet the um the distress oxide spray that's on there it's going to make it blend a little and that's kind of why we're using this because I, I don't want it to turn orange I want it to kind of blend a little bit okay and I'm going to do that on all of them and on this one let me see what happens if I don't add the water you get a little bit more color which you may or may not want you know it just depends on what you're doing I think I like it with the water a little bit I don't want too much, but at the same time, I like it to blend in there a little bit. Again, you could do this with watercolors or whatever you have. And I'm doing this quickly. You guys could take your time, definitely. I am going very quick, so... And all I'm trying to do is get some of this orange to go up the, the petals a little bit so it looks a little more natural rather than just, to, you know, sprayed on there. And I do think details matter when you do your journals. I think that's part of the fun in making them is to add those details and do the fun things like this and use different medias and I don't know I think for me that's the the fun part of doing a junk journal is doing all the different things so okay so I'm kind of added enough color in there now what I'm going to do and you don't have to do this I am taking uh, my distress crayon and this is spice marmalade also okay but it's going to go on a little bit darker because of the way it goes on and I am going to just kind of go more toward the center, not all the way up, so it's a little bit darker. Okay. Now, if you just had one or the other, you wouldn't even have to do that. And then I just take my water, and water activates this. So I'm going to just kind of go over it a little bit, and it will blend in, and it'll be a little bit darker toward the middle. I'm going to move hair in there or something. Off of there okay so that just makes it a little bit darker toward the middle if you see that and then this one you can see that it just adds a little bit more a little bit more contrast in there and of course you could do that with like if you have um, gelatos or even just watercolors or any actually any paint really and the way that these distress crayons work is that they're activated with water. Now, if you wait too long, it's hard to blend them because they dry. But anyway, so what that did is that just added a little bit more color toward the middle. And you can see that um, the other distressed oxide, it's already kind of blended in because when it dries, it'll do that. You don't want this too wet, otherwise you won't have any contrast because I'm. It's the same color. It's just a little bit more concentrated. Of course, you could take this and go all the way up the sides with that too. And I'm just kind of going up the petal, just just a kind of fourth of the way. That's what's so fun about those flowers that are, um, that are, uh, you know, the white. You can just make them whatever you want to make them. You have them blend into whatever you have. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and use these um, to make my little my little flowers I'm going to put that on top I think and the way I did it is I just kind of took the petals and I didn't lay them on top I put them in between like that 
So I'm just going to take, I'm using um, just some tacky glue here. Let me get that. I'll just use this brush. I'll be fine. So I am just going to take some tacky glue and put it down here. And then I'm going to put it, oops, wrong one, down here. And put every other one. Just kind of do that. It'll look good. Let me see which one I'm going to put like that. And I only did two, um, you know, layers. I don't, on a sunflower, I don't know that you need more than that, but that's up to you. I mean, totally what you want to do. You get a lot of little flowers in that packet, but they're all different kinds. And I have several packets, so I could definitely do more if I wanted to, but. Okay, so that's fine. Um, I'm not. You don't want them to line up because you want to be able to see all the petals. That's the point in putting two layers in there. You know. Okay, so that's going to be your flower. Now you need a center. And what I did is I took some twine. And let me get this piece here. I'm just going to cut off a piece. I don't know how big I need it for sure. And I just took a little bit of glue, kind of put it on the edge like that. And then I started to roll it. I think I used, here I'll just use the end of this since it's already kind of messed up. I kind of started to roll it on that and then took it off. It's kind of hard to do in your hand. Then I added just a little bit more glue. And I didn't use my 3-in-1 or anything because I didn't want it to look shiny when it was done. So I just kind of roll it. Make sure it stays reasonably tight. It doesn't have to be perfect, but add glue when you need it. And it does make a little bit of mess on your hands, but that's okay. Making a mess is fun, I think. So you're just going to do that. And just keep going until it makes a big enough center that you like it. Um, I think sunflowers have a really big center, so I tried to make mine proportionate to the flower, so. And I just kept adding glue as I went. Okay. And the reason I did this is I wanted it to have texture. I thought about putting a button in there, which you could do. But I wanted it to have texture, and I thought this would be good. So anyway, I think that's probably good enough right there. Put a dab of glue on the end. Okay, let me see. Is that about the size I made the other one? I think so. So then I just kind of cut it. All right, so that is your center. Here, I'm just going to do one so you guys can see. I'm not going to repeat it. And then I just put some glue down here. And I like using the tacky glue because it doesn't um, dry all shiny. And it dries pretty quickly. So. And so then I put that in the middle. Make sure the end goes down. And my problem was when I got done doing that, then I went, oh, I think it's a little bit too light, right? Don't you think? So then I took some of my walnut stain and my little inker thing here. And I took some walnut stain. I mean, you could use vintage photo or whatever you have. And I just inked up my, my little wine. Yeah, if you have some that's darker, then you can skip this step, but I didn't. And so you got to make do with what you have. So anyway, when I got done, I had something that looked like that. 
So that was my sunflower. And I thought that would be really cute to put at least a couple of these on here. So we will have, you know, this on there, that on there. Okay. Um, probably put a couple of these on there. I'm not sure where exactly. Maybe one here, maybe one there. And then we'll have our whatever kind of lace we put. I'm leaning more toward this. I hate using my last few pieces, but you know what? I think it, I think this just may have to happen. Okay. Um, the other thing I may do is I may put, I have, this is part of a kind of a big doily that I cut apart and it has this really fun lace on the edge and this is all vintage. I'm very, I'm leaning toward putting that on the edge. Okay. So I will probably glue that on, um, just because I've already um, kind of sealed this shut. Now I could, um, you know, open up the uh, my machine to where it has the um, sleeve guide or whatever that is, you know, where you pull that off. And I could probably go ahead and sew that. But I don't know if I'm going to do that. But anyway, I'm thinking about doing that. And so then that would be my cover. Okay, I don't think probably won't put another one on there. I think that'll be too much. So anyway, I'm thinking that's going to be my cover, guys. So let's see. So let's just go ahead and do some of this. See how far we go. I'm going to take my walnut stain and I am going to go ahead and vintage this up a little. It's hard to do when the wax is on there already. I probably should have done it beforehand, but it's not, you can do it. It's not impossible because it'll it'll stick to the white ends okay and I don't know if I want to kind of make this look a little bit more raggedy because this side is I think I'll do it with my scissors maybe I don't want it to be perfect when the other sides are not because that will bug me okay so now I'm going to just go ahead and ink that a little bit all right maybe do that on that edge Now I feel better about that because it's not perfect. Okay, so I'm, I don't want to put that upside down. All right, so I'm going to put that there. And then where did my other piece go? This goes there. I'm going to put that on top. Yeah, I think that's about right. I kind of want it in the middle. I do want to ink this a little. Again, I probably should have done that before I waxed it, but I get in a hurry sometimes. You won't see it that much, but I just like to have it just a little vintaged up. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and glue this onto here. I don't know. I may sew it too. I may go ahead and glue it and then come back in and sew it around here just to give it some more texture. So definitely going to have to use my three-in-one glue because for sure whenever you have stuff waxed it doesn't it doesn't um, stick real well unless you use your three-in-one because it's shiny. And I am just going to put this on a few spots because I probably am going to go ahead and sew. All right. And I would do that anyway because I don't want it really to show through too much. I want it to, you know, stick on, but not, I don't want blobs of glue thrown, 
much going through there. So, okay, so that is going to come over the top a little bit and hang down. I'm good with that. And that's going to go kind of right here. Now I could tilt it a little bit. I love tilting things. I don't know why. I just do. I think that it, it just always ends up looking better to me. Not sure why. Maybe I could do that to this too. Let me see. Do I want to go this way with that? I just like things kind of not perfect. And then maybe go like that. Yeah, I like that. I like it. I like it. I don't know. I'm not sure why. To me, things don't look right when they're perfect. I'm not going to put a ton of glue because I think I'm going to sew it. I'm not positive yet. Okay, so when I do this, I'm going to tilt it a tiny bit that way. All right. Let me see how that looks. Yeah, I love that. I love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. Mm, I could sew right here. I think that would look good. It's okay, so just a minute, and I'm going to go sew. Okay, guys? I went ahead and sewed, and I think it's worth the time to do that, because you can see it kind of frames it, and I'm using a thicker thread, um, because I want it to do that. And I'm going to probably put that about right here, because if I use this, which I think I'm going to, is it will um, come to about right here. And even if it has to go over it a little, I don't really want it to go over it, though. That's my thing. I just don't. I want it to be, I can always cut this to make sure. I don't think it will. Now, what I have decided that I want to do is I'm pretty sure that I want to go ahead and put this lace on this trim. But... I think I'm going to wait um, because I can put it on, because I'm going to glue it on and it, it's not interfering with the closure or anything. I am going to wait until later on to see if I want it or not. Okay. Um, I may not. I may put something completely different on there because I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sold and I always do that. Um, so I'm going to put this on because I'm, pre I'm pretty sold on that and I'm going to glue it on. Now, of course, if I had done this earlier, I could have sewed it right directly onto um, the, uh, the material, but this will hold it. It's not going to go anywhere, I promise. I do put a good amount of glue when I have waxed pieces because it does you know, take a little bit more because it is free, but it will, it does, it does hold it, so, because I've done it many times. Okay, I could use my little spreader thing, but I don't know where it's at. It's buried somewhere. Oh, gosh. Here it is right here. Okay. I'm just going to kind of spread that around a little. I don't want it to squirt out the sides, but I want it to cover it, you know, pretty good. So I am going to put that toward the middle, like right here. Okay, and it's going over my closure, okay? So I am totally good with that. I'm leaving enough room that if I decide to put lace on there later that it'll be okay. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that I press down on that and get it in there good so it'll stick. Turn it over. Now I don't think I'm going to put anything on the back, but I may. 
change my mind later and put something on there. I rarely, rarely, rarely do a cover and call it a day. I mean, it's always... Okay, so I'm probably going to put one sunflower there and one sunflower there. I don't want... I want that part to show. Okay, so that's how they're going to go. I always like things with dimension on there. If it's just buttons or whatever. I am going to put this on there. Okay. And that one is going to go right up here. Kind of, kind of hitting the corner. Okay, because I know that my lace is going to come... And whenever you're doing this, this is going to go on later, but I, I have to make room for it now because I know that this is going to go underneath it. So I'm not going to glue these little pieces down here so that I know that I have room for this later, okay? It's going to fit right, right here or whatever piece I put on there, okay? So I know that it will fit, okay? Then I'm going to take this one. It doesn't take a lot of glue. I always probably overkill. Now, I don't want it to cover my words down here, but it's going to be peeking up through there. And I don't want it too so close to here because I want to have room to put that lace if I want to later, which I'm not, like I said, I may not put that on there or that trim. Okay, guys, that's it. That's all I'm going to do with this. Um, you know... I don't know, I mean, you could always add other things to it, but at some point it gets to be too much. So, you know, sometimes too much is okay, sometimes it's not. Um, I may put a button or something here or a little dangly. Um, I'm not sure. I like how that looks. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. And I think probably um, the only other thing I'm going to do is you know, sew in the signature and then add my lace to the side. I may add a couple pockets here. And to be honest with you, I'm thinking about um, little denim pockets or something just to, for the contrast, I think it'd be really kind of cute. Um, but this is, this is basically our cover. And then all we have to do now, oops, is we have to, uh, get our pages ready and that'll just consist of um, figuring out what is going to what you're going to use what you're not going to use if you're going to print on both sides these pages should fit in here perfectly okay so um, I'm going to get 20 pages ready so it'll be the pages that are in the kit plus any um, coffee dyed paper tea dyed paper um, other different papers that you want to add so you would do that, okay? And um, then we'll be ready to sew in our signature. And I am going to do this journal to where we um, decorate after we sew in our signature. Um, not that that's necessarily easier or not, but I just thought that would be any, uh, a quick way to show everybody kind of, you know, a way to do it and it's not super complicated okay well that's all I have for this time and um, uh, we will probably work on this next time and then I am working on my little uh, the little rabbit journal and I will show you um, what where I've gone on that because on that one I'm actually doing some kind of stuff off uh, off uh, video that I'm going to show you, but this one I kind of want to do start to finish just because there's so many people talking about, I don't know where to begin or whatever, and, you know, go get some old jeans out of your closet or something and some leftover uh, paper bags or, you know, packing stuff and do a digital. That's all I've done here. These flowers you can get any at any craft store. So, all right, guys, that's all I have. And, um, We'll see you next time.